Yes. The show here in Miami, we've been running for about two and a half years now. We opened in May of 2003. Three, I guess it was, and or 2004. Sorry, May 2004. We uh, started doing this show four nights a week: Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, at the beginning of the week, we work with Carnival Cruise Lines, so we're always flying to one of the ships and then flying back here to Miami. So four days a week was a little too much at the hotel. Now we're down to one night a week every Sunday night, and we still fly to the uh, Carnival Cruise ship every uh, Tuesday and do our big show on the ship as well. Our show in Miami uses uh, four dancers as well as one technician. This is uh, our smaller, more of an intimate cabaret show, which is a little bit scaled down. Uh, we still uh, we rotate the dancers, so we always have at least four. That way, if someone has something to do, we have probably a total of about eight dancers in the rotation, and we always uh, use four in the show. The music we use in our show is uh, something that we try to pace appropriately from high energy to slower ballads. I think the, uh, the audience wants to hear music that has a familiar feel to it, maybe not recognizable, but they like the ups and downs in the music. And uh, again, a lot of times when we went and saw shows, we noticed that the better shows out there, they took you from here down to here and then back up. And so over the years doing this for as long as we have, we, we kind of learned the pacing of it is just as important as the material itself. And I spend a lot of time just choosing the right song, choosing the right length of the song, and it's just, and, and it's never done. This is always a work in progress. It's, uh, we never close the door on anything. Uh, the music we change around all the time. The lighting, I'm here every day before the show, fine tuning, changing, and uh, the, the show is, is never finished. So uh, see it again in a few weeks and there will definitely be different accents and, and different changes. Crusoe and I started performing in Reno as street performers. We 
both had full-time jobs and on the weekends we would go to whatever festival was in town or just uh, downtown Reno and we would do the metamorphosis illusion all day long and pass the hat afterwards. Uh, we were lucky enough to be seen at one of those festivals by the uh, general manager of the Tahoe Biltmore Hotel who uh, told us they had a little cabaret that they wanted to reopen after it had been dark for years and he asked if we had a full show and of course we lied and said yes we have a full show we had six weeks to go from doing the metamorphosis to doing a full one hour long show we hooked up with a local dance studio in Reno and hired some dancers uh, who uh, also turned us on to some uh, people in the technical field. We uh, had a friend uh, in the business already, uh, Louise Wallace, who did all the costumes for Night Magic, which was a show starring Richard Tataco in Reno at the time. She became our good friend, helped us put some costumes together. We opened at the Biltmore in December of 93 and uh, we were supposed to be there for uh, six weeks for their winter ski season. We ended up at Tahoe for three years in various shows and it just kept growing from there. Uh, my advice for anyone who wants to go from being a hobbyist in the magic, uh, in, it was with performing magic, on, to doing a full stage show, I think the, the, the most important thing is to give the audience what they want. Uh, there's, there's, very little, there's very little market for magicians performing for other magicians, yet I think a lot of the mistakes that starting out magicians do is they're so worried about deceiving the fraternity that they forget that the audience just wants to be razzle-dazzled for an hour. What about the postcard that I recently received from the king himself? And the copy of the postcard that is still inside this red box. Folks, I give a free trip to Graceland to anyone who can prove that this has been set up in advance in any way at all. It has not, I guarantee it. Now please, let's take a look. The lovely, lovely Angela will help us out tonight. A true leftover from the 50s. Let's recap what just happened. Four people voluntarily stood up. Now each one of them offered us a little bit of information about the king's private life. Information I couldn't have possibly known. Meanwhile, in this box, a copy of a postcard, which I maintain will validate everything these four people just said. Let's take a look. Dear Kevin and Caruso, that's what he calls us, having a great time in Miami. <laughs> We decided to open this show, uh, and we have a very good relationship with the hotel. They don't charge us rent in this theater. We um, we give them the publicity of having a show that they can uh, uh, say that they have for their groups that come in or their hotel guests, and uh, and in exchange for that, uh, we we keep the theater working and uh, lighting for their other groups. To to take a show like this on the road is. Uh, like giving birth, it's it's uh, it's a very it's a very time-consuming and uh, very. Uh random uh, operation. You never know if you're going to make it. Some cities might do well. We, we've we always decided that if we can find a place to stay, it would creatively do us a lot better in the long run because then we could always make the changes we want to make. We can always evolve the show. We've been very lucky to be associated with Carnival Cruise Lines for over 10 years now.
now. And um, in addition to two full shows that me and uh, Caruso and I perform on the Carnival ships, we also have produced shows for Carnival which run on other ships. We have a lady magician, uh, Deja, performs on the Carnival Conquest every week and she flies in from Vegas and uh, we produced a show for her. Next year we're producing a show for another magician on the brand new Carnival ship. So uh, I think that uh, between the hotel and the ship and a few days off in between for ourselves, we really couldn't ask for anything more at this point anyway. Our show is at the Ramada Marco Polo Hotel, which is in Sunny Isles Beach, uh, just a few minutes north of South Beach. Uh, we are in their main theater. We seat about 400 people in the Persian room here, and the show is every Sunday night. The uh, best way to get tickets is on our website, which is newwavemagic.com. There's uh, discounts online if you buy your tickets in advance. We keep our theater general seating because some weeks we have, uh, we're full, other weeks we're not that full and it was just too hard to coordinate the uh, seat numbers depending on the layout of the room uh, and uh, general seating is works out you get here at 730 pick your seat there's a bar in the lobby you walk in to bring drinks in and uh, we plan on being here indefinitely uh, two and a half years so far as uh, where we're standing now and uh, certainly hope for at least two more